Hey everybody, it's Sean from Tested, back with this year's edition of Favorite Things. We've got a nice variety, uh, some toys, some tools, some books. So let's let's get started. Uh, let's start with the toys. Uh, this uh, fulfilled something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've always wanted an Iron Man uh, armor, particularly from Hot Toys, which does some really, really nice versions of the armor. And um, I just never got around to it. So this year I bit the bullet and I got this. This is the uh, Iron Man 3 Mark III suit construction version from Hot Toys. Uh, this is actually, uh, as far as I know, this is actually a re-release of one that they had done a few years ago. Um, I don't know if they've actually done any updates to it. It looks identical to me, um, but I missed it the first time around. Um, but anyway, so uh, it, it hits the sweet spot for me because you get you get the you get part of the suit, you get building and construction and tools, and you also get lighting, which it just lights up beautifully uh, between the arc reactor, the eyes, and it even has these little spotlights down here on the base that are somewhat adjustable, so you can get a nice uh, uh, up light, and. Um, it, it, it's, it simply comes flat packed, it assembles, you hang it onto the little chains, has all these great little cords and plugs to uh, go into the bases, and it even has his little uh, battery pack down here um, that goes into the base as well. Uh, all the little guys, including the hand repulsor, lights up, and you can even remove the chest plate if you want to reveal the inner workings of the suit. So. Like I said, just hit a real sweet spot for me between being a really cool figure and kind of, you know, my building construction tool aspect as well. Um, the, the other thing that I really like about uh, this, this guy is that it can run off of either batteries or a power supply, which, <laughs> which is always annoying when you have these awesome figures that use like the little coin batteries and stuff like that. Uh, they always go dead. You got to remember to remove them so they don't explode on you. So it was a nice touch that you can either do batteries in the base or a uh, separate power supply, which was not included, but easy to pick up on Amazon or whatever. Um, yeah, so the Iron Man Mark III construction version, which is a re-release -re from Hot Toys. All right, so let's move on to some more toys. Uh, other than Iron Man, probably my favorite purchase of the year is this guy uh, from Gremlins. Um, in fact, all of the other toys are all from NECA. They've been like knocking it out of the park for me this year. And they have a whole series of Gremlin figures and I cannot recommend them enough. They are uh, pretty well articulated. Uh, the paint job on these was really well done, better than I thought. They have uh, even some nice articulation like the mouth and the head. And th the thing that really pushes it over the edge though is the accessories that come with it. Like this guy, he, he came with the popcorn bags and the 3D glasses. We got a, a doodah bar. And um, all of the other ones that they've put out as well uh, come equally uh, fleshed out with really good <laughs> um, accessories and detailing. My only complaint about the Gremlins is they can be a little bit hard to pose so that they stand up on their own because they got such tiny feet, but you can do it uh, with a little bit of work. Um, so Gremlins from NECA, they have uh, Gizmo, Spike, all the other bad guys and like the various different ones like the, the, the trench coat guy uh, and um, uh, Santa version, the carolers, uh, they're, they're all out there and available and, and I highly recommend them. Also from NECA, we are going to take a look at uh, some of my favorite movie monsters. They've been doing a really nice line of universal uh, classic movie monsters, and I've picked up the Frankenstein's monster and the mummy so far. And not only are they really well detailed and really capture the likeness of, of, of Karloff in both cases here, um, but they, uh, they are releasing different versions, one of which is a full color version, as if you were on set and seeing it in person, but I picked up the black and white versions, which retains, you know, how you picture them in the films themselves, which I really appreciate the fact that they've been doing both versions. Um, all of them come with a variety of heads and accessories. Um, 
I couldn't locate my Frankenstein monster ones. But uh, the mummy came with uh, a nice little chest, including his uh, revival scroll, which is a nice touch, and various heads and hands as well. And the detailing and paint job um, and articulation is all, we, all, all well done. Um, they've been also selling some accessory kits for both of these. And uh, for example, you can get a nice sarcophagus set uh, to go along with the Karloff mummy, which I have not picked up yet, but also looks really well done. Um, so yeah, so NECA uh, monster toys of various films. Um, speaking of films, uh, we have a few film-related books to, to take a look at. Um, let's do this guy first. Uh, any Ghostbusters fans will recognize uh, the title of this book, The Tobin Spirit Guide. This was actually a gift from my wife for my birthday, and it is one of my prized possessions uh, uh, now, because what she did is she actually bought, there is an actual Tobin Spirit Guide that you can buy online, and it is a compendium of monsters, creatures, ghosts, spooks, specters, etc., that you would expect from the Spirit Guide. So she bought the actual official uh, book release, and it already has some kind of nice patinaed pages, uh, looked a little aged, and then she further uh, dyed them with some coffee to make them look uh, even more old and decrepit. She crumpled up the edges a little bit. Uh, she, she weathered the, uh, the book markers, and then she sent these to uh, Custom Leather Books. Marsha at Custom Leather Books will do custom coverings for all kinds of different things, journals, whatever. And this was a special request for my wife. So she built this entire leather cover from scratch, which blows my mind. Um, you should check out her site. Um, I think we're gonna link to her Instagram. And then she has a, an actual website too, where she has examples of her work and, and shows a little bit of how she does it. But she will hand carve uh, little kind of topographical cutouts to do all of the raised items on the book. And then this very soft, supple leather, leather is uh, then uh, pushed down over top of it and I assume glued in place. But she even did detailing like this, this copper banding and the rivets at the corner, like just I, so well done. I love this thing so much. And like just this textured leather that she used uh, all around and um, I did do a little additional weathering on it. She did some, but she didn't know how far to push it. Um, but I did a little bit of uh, chemical weathering on the copper banding and a little fuller's earth and other uh, grime on here and then wiped it off to get it a little grimier. But this thing is just, I love this so much. Um, and Marsha at Custom Other Books did an amazing job and you should check her out. Um, for some of her other work. So the Custom Tobin Spirit Guide. Uh, inside is the regular book, outside Custom Leather. All right, so let's take a look at this monster. Uh, this is the uh, Mad Dreams and Monsters, the work of Phil Tippett and Tippett Studio. Um, for those not familiar, Phil is a legend in the movie industry. He is a specialist in stop motion animation. We've done many, many different videos with him in the studio over the years, which you should totally look up and check out on the on our channel. Um, but Phil did uh, a lot of the stop motion animation for the original Star Wars. So he either created or animated things like the Tauntaun, the Adats, uh, the Rancor, lots of different creatures, the chess set, um, which also was redone then for Solo as well. Um, and then Phil went on to found his own studio where they worked on, uh, they did stop motion for RoboCop, such with Ed 209 and then RoboCop 2 with the Kane robots, which we have featured many times on Tested. Um, and, and then recently Phil has uh, finally released his, his 30 year project Mad God, which is a full stop motion animation movie um, that they just released on Shudder. So uh, I've been lucky enough to do some work with the studio uh, as well as our other tested contributor, Kate Sabaker. Um, and um, 
just being in the shop, the years and years and years of photos and sketches just stuck up on the wall. In addition to all of the uh, creatures and other uh, stuff that is left in the studio, I was like, you guys need to make a book. And they finally did. Uh, this is put out um, by a French duo who has been mostly known for doing uh, documentaries of uh, Ray Harryhausen, other creatures. They did one on Phil that has the same title as the book. And basically they just took all of this uh, stuff from Tippett Studio and put it in a gorgeous volume. It has great photos. It covers everything. Um, we have Jurassic Park DID, which we have covered here before. We have Starship Troopers. It's like, it. it's totally worth picking up if you are a fan of fills or just creatures and cool stuff in general. And it goes a little, it goes from everything from the stop motion stuff and, and the practical stuff to Mad God and the more digital stuff. And I have to, I have to point out that I am in the book. I didn't even know that I was in the book, but I am in the book because one of the most recent things that Tippett has done is we did stop motion puppets for both the Mandalorian and uh, the Book of Boba Fett. And they have a little blurb in there uh, about our work and the uh, walker that we did and also the spider that we did for Boba Fett. So Mad Gods and Monsters, I, I, I mean, I'm a little biased. I am in the book, but it's a really cool collection of everything that we love at, here attested. And um, I'm in it. Uh, Kate Sabaker is mentioned many, many, many times in this book because she's been working on Tippett projects for a long time. So yes, the, the Mad Dreams and Monsters definitely worth checking out. All right, so finally we'll take a look at a few tools that I have picked up over the last year and have been using a lot, um, both uh, actually kind of model building related. Uh, I, I have a pretty decent collection of paints at home, and I just, I don't do painting as much as actual building stuff. So what happens with my paints every time is they separate. Um, and then you're sitting here mixing and shaking them forever. And I just can never get them mixed to my satisfaction, especially ones with like pigment in it, like uh, metallic paints. So one of the things that I invested in was this guy, which is a vortex mixer. And I'm sure model painting veterans will be like, well, yeah, uh, that's what you should have gotten years ago. But I, I didn't know about them. So vortex mixer, um, we showed it a little in action when we did the uh, the cup noodle bandai kit build, but you simply press the paint down onto the top and it basically will create a little vortex inside there and really mixes it up thoroughly. And this has been a lifesaver for me and I like it. Uh, this has been a lifesaver for me and has been one of my most used tools over the last year. So yeah, Vortex Mixer. I've gone through a few different paint mixers and this has been by far the best one uh, that I have used. I love it. So Vortex Mixer for paint. Uh, and then another modeling tool that I picked up um, that I was actually skeptical about is this little micro sander. Um, I do a lot, a lot of the stuff I end up doing is usually kind of small and I do a lot of 3D printing, uh, particularly resin printing. So you get those little tiny support marks that uh, can often be in little hard to reach places. And I picked this up on a whim thinking, eh, it, you know, maybe it'll work. I don't know. This has worked far better than I, I expected, but it's basically just a little micro sander. It has various tips that you can interchange to fit, you know, whatever, uh, item you're working on and it comes with different grits of sandpaper and little adhesive uh, shapes that go on the various different tips. Um, it has worked far better than I would have expected um, and it, uh, it has allowed me to get into little tiny tight spots that would normally be really hard to sand. Um, the only downside that I have to say about this is that uh, the, the, the amount of adhesive uh, sheets that it comes with are not very many. You can of course buy more, they're a little overpriced, but I also say that it's easy to make uh, your own little shapes to stick on these with some uh, adhesive rubber cement ATG tape, something like that. 
um, and it and it's good to go. So I have used this quite a lot over the last year, and um, I I would actually recommend this if you do a lot of modeling or small uh, detail work that you need to sand. So the micro sander, I think this is a micro lux. We'll put a link in the uh, descriptions, but. That's just some of the uh, stuff that I've collected over the last year, some of my favorite things. Uh, check them out. Uh, let us know what your favorite things are in the comments and uh, happy holidays.